everybody is tracking the aftermath of the Colorado shooting. And it's important to be asking the questions that the mainstream media refuses to ask. And that's why I'm so glad there are reporters who are, I don't know, quasi-mainstream, local Fox affiliate, Awesome reporter Ben Swan with Fox 19 out of Cincinnati has been doing the reality check for long enough now that people have an immense amount of respect for him as a journalist. And I definitely applaud the perspective that he brings to the conversation here. But I want to share specifically from him two questions that, that, that a lot of people seem to say, well, we need to be asking, but I think I might have the answers for. And what you're about to hear is the actual James Holmes shooting conspiracy. That's right. I've got it figured out. Here's Ben Swan. He was dressed in black, wearing a tactical helmet, vest, and leggings, as well as throat and groin protectors. Police say Holmes used an AR-15 assault rifle, a Remington shotgun, and a 40 caliber Glock handgun during that attack. And police say they found a second 40 caliber Glock inside of his car. The question being asked, how could he be allowed to buy those guns legally in Colorado? The question not being asked, how does an unemployed graduate student afford to buy them? Look, a decent AR-15 rifle costs $1,000 or more all by itself. The shotgun and the two handguns would easily run another 1000 total. Spare mags, sights, slings, and so on, you're going to run another 1000 across those three firearms. The bulletproof vest, that's easily another 800 bucks. And then you have all the money spent on bomb making materials, which brings us to our next question. But before we get to that, let me answer the first one, because he asks, how did he pay for that? Well, we have the answer, and I don't know if this came out in time for your report, Mr. Swan, but it turns out that James Holmes, as a member of this elite neuroscience program, was receiving not only free tuition, but a $26,000 annual stipend. That's plenty of money. But even then, what you're talking about here is really only a few thousand dollars for this arsenal. You know, and certainly within the budget of someone who's getting $26,000 a year and doesn't really have any other expenses as a student. As you know, police say that Holmes rigged his apartment with an incredibly complicated maze of firebombs. But on the day he was arrested, he immediately told police about the bombs. Why? So our second question, where did this graduate student in neuroscience learn how to make a series of bombs so complicated that the FBI took two days to figure out how to disarm them? Okay, first of all, you're trying to understand the logic behind the action of someone who just shot up a movie theater and killed 12 people. Mm, no, not buying the argument from rationality here. One official said the intricacy of these bombs is something rarely seen outside of war zones. He had a tripwire set behind the door to kill anyone who opened it. Wait, 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 wait. Rarely seen outside of war zones. Do you know how dumb the people are that they're accepting into the military these days now that the standards are so low. And yet, after setting this intricate death trap, decides to warn police about it before someone's killed, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Neither does what police are saying about this being a lone wolf attack. All the evidence we have, every single indicator is that this was this is all Mr. Holmes' activity and that he wasn't particularly aided by anyone else. But is that true? Eyewitness reports from the scene indicate that Holmes got a phone call from someone inside the theater. And also that tear gas was thrown from more than one location. He got a phone call and most people when they get phone calls in theaters, they go straight out into the lobby to answer it. This person went, went directly to the emergency exit. He had his foot propped open by the door and from the crack it looked like he was signaling somebody or looking for somebody to come his way. As I was sitting down to get my seat, I noticed that a person came up to the front road, to the front right, sat down, and as credits were going, I know it seemed like he got a phone call. So he went out towards the emergency exit doorway, which I thought was unusual to take a phone call. From what we saw, he wasn't alone. He had someone with him uh, because the, the second can of tear gas didn't come from his side. Okay, so all the second gunmen, second shooter theories aside, 
we have an incident where someone walked into a crowded movie theater and started shooting people after throwing some kind of gas canister. So it, 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 a couple of them, actually. So it, it's certainly expected to have some conflicting testimonials from the witnesses about what actually happened. But you have a canister that gets bounced off a wall. Yeah, next thing you know, it's coming from another direction. You're in a crowded theater. Of course, he's sitting with someone. But as one of your witnesses that you cited here actually said, he walked in and sat down alone. So I don't really buy the argument here, but it's a certain interesting possibility to explore. But then you ask a question again, which the answer should be readily apparent. I mean, Ben, you know you're really popular on the internet as well as on television, right? Probably more so with all the Ron Paul supporters out there who love your work. But really, the question here of how would he learn? I mean, this is like, the. I mean, allegedly, he's in an elite neuroscience program that you have to have really, really good grades to get into. You have to have impeccable academic credentials to be accepted for. Have you heard of the, the, the terrorist's cookbook? Uh, I mean, have you heard of the, the, the poor man's James Bond? I mean, I'm, th 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 there are lots of publications out there. There are tons of websites. There's, there's a whole anonymous internet by way of which you can purchase all of these things anonymously. So, I mean, the, 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 the idea, I mean, how hard is it to set up a, 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 an explosive that's complex in the way that it's rigged? I mean, they would take, I mean, we're talking about the FBI. You say it took them two days to dismantle. I mean, the FBI doesn't take less than two days to do anything. So your your assertion here that, there, you know, or your suggestion, suggestion, that there had to be someone else's help, there had to be some military expertise involved. No, absolutely not. Clearly, the guy could have done this on himself. So what is the James Holmes shooting conspiracy? Well, let's go to Barack Obama on that count. But I also believe that a lot of gun owners would agree that AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. <laughs> that they belong on the, the battlefield of war, not on the streets of our cities. Jeez, you think with platitudes like that, guns would be completely outlawed by now, right? Jeez. Well, obviously, the bullshit stops with the American people who realize that this is a load of propagandistic crap. Aside from the fact that he says AK-47s, uh, I mean, he is aware that the U.S. military uses M-16s, or as they would be referred to in the civilian parlance equivalent, as if he was referring to that here, would be AR-15s. And the fact that he's... Oh, Private citizens having guns. No, nope, nope, that's bad. But war is good. Yes, we need guns on the battlefield. I mean, holy fucking shit. Is this guy a, a liberal or is, is he a just a run-of-the-mill fascist? What am I thinking, of course. So what happens next? Well, Piers Morgan, as we've covered just a couple days ago, came out actually right after the incident, tweeted, more Americans will buy guns after this to defend themselves. And so the dangerous spiral descends. When, how does it stop? Now, do I, do I really have to, to break this one down again? Because the dangerous spiral descending of people buying guns to defend, like, I mean, if you buy a gun to defend yourself, next thing you know, you're going to be shooting up a movie theater. The, the, the lack of, of logic here, the uh, appeal to emotional platitudes is really scary, but not nearly as scary as what we heard on Piers Morgan's show on CNN from Mayor Michael Bloomberg of New York City. I don't understand why the police officers across this country don't stand up collectively and say, we're going to go on strike. We're not going to protect you unless you, the public, through your legislature, do what's required to keep us safe. Yes, we will not protect you unless you give up your ability to protect yourself. And of course, the money for this came from the government. James. Holmes was a government-sponsored criminal. That's right. The money that he used to kill those people came directly from the government. And there is a conspiracy here. And the conspiracy here is using shit like this against us to impede our rights, to take away our ability to defend ourselves, and to shove more big government down our throats. You don't have to look too far behind the curtain to see this one, Ben. It's right in front of you. These are the big conspiracies. This is what it's all about. But I have to say... 
There's good news. There's good news. Because there's a truth conspiracy going on now as well. And as much as the government conspires to make us weak and powerless and dependent upon the father figure, the parental figure, the mother, whatever the fuck, sick, twisted view it is that people have of government that has us turning to it as the institutionalization of all of our worst desires to control, dominate, and manipulate others by force and coercion. The truth is getting out. And this is just, I, for all of the bullshit that we're seeing, and all the fear-mongering about the UN gun treaty and, and the threat that that represents to average American gun owners, there was a poll conducted by Gallup in 1990 asking people whether they thought we should have stricter gun control laws or whether or not, or, or same or loosened gun control laws. And in 1990, 78% of Americans said that we should have stricter gun control laws. They did the same survey again in 2004 and found that of those who wanted stricter gun control, it was only 44%. Those who wanted it the same or loosened, 55%. So the truth conspiracy is winning here. And frankly, it really doesn't matter what the government does to try to scare us into giving up our rights if we refuse to be afraid. And while I'm glad, Ben, that you're asking questions, and I'm glad that I'm able to ask questions here, that we're able to see through this bullshit propaganda that is the true conspiracy that sprang up out of the Colorado shootings, we're able to get to the truth. And it may be, it may be that James Holmes was a government plant, a total operative, or was an agent that had been, you know, psyoped into some crazy fantasy where he was convinced that he had to do, that he, perhaps he was even, he was drugged by CIA agents as part of MK Ultra, and they made him do this. I, totally possible. I'm not ruling it out. The government has done far worse and far stranger things before. But the truth conspiracy is winning. So spread the truth however you can, even if it's just in platitudes. Because we know when seconds count, the police are just minutes away, and an armed society is a polite society, but a society that actively seeks the truth and actively fights the fear is the one that will be safest because it will be least likely to give in to the government conspiracy to control us. Because gun control isn't about guns, it's about control.